are just starting the, we're going to start the central nervous system, start with the brain, and uh, in an attempt to sort of interject the human element into a lot of the things we talk about, I asked Rick Franzo, how many people know Rick from, from the uh, C-Store, to come and talk to us today. Rick is a, uh, I don't know, what are you, a survivor? A survivor. Survivor, because you should be? Dead. Yes, you should be dead. This is uh, actually our boy here. This is Rick. This is a oh, it looks like a high resolution. It is a CAT scan, and this is these are all transverse sections. These are our uh, sagittal sections, and you start way up here at the top. This is up uh, superior of his head, and you see that thing right there. Should should that be there? No, that's brain tumor. Is it big? Yeah. yeah, it's huge. And what you do with these things, when you look at these transverse sections, a lot of you will see a lot of this. This is supposed to be straight, if I can make a straight line here. But what he's done is, because of the brain tumor, brain tumor has pushed his, his midline structure, which is a structure we'll talk about, the longitudinal fissure, oh, I don't know what, probably four or five centimeters to one, to one side. And that, that puts pressure, intracranial pressure on the brain. And this is a lower section of it here. And these are lateral sections here, as you can see. Right up here, here's the tumor. And the tumor is growing. In, the the um, intracranial pressure is rising. I don't know what it was. Um, intracranial pressure should be about 15 to 20 millimeters of mercury. He's probably up, up around 30 or 40 right now, which is not good. I don't know why he didn't uh, damage more tissue. And it's, it, uh, in order to relieve the pressure, had these uh, these, well, how, how, how high were these? Uh, four and a half centimeters. Four and a half centimeter bumps on his skull. You can see it there, pretty good. And so he went to the, the uh, uh, went to the hospital, had it removed, went through how many weeks of uh, therapy? Four months. Four months of therapy, but that's his start. Take it away, Rick. Good morning, how are you? My name is Rick Franzo, like they said. Um, you know, it's kind of surreal for me to be talking to you guys in here. When I was a student here at ESU, uh, I had biology class in this very room. So, um, you know, I'm really happy to be talking to you guys today. You all have handouts on brain tumors. Let's just take a look at that real quick. Um, these are facts. First off, how many people know somebody with a brain tumor? How many? Raise your hands high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Fantastic. That's that's great because most of the time, not great that they have brain tumors, obviously, but you know, really nobody knows anybody with brain tumors. So it's pretty amazing for the the numbers uh, that I just saw here. And you know, you look at some of the facts. Is that every day, 575 people are estimated to be diagnosed with brain tumors. It's about 23 an hour. Um, you know, there's 120 different types of brain tumors. So making accurate and efficient treatment is very very complicated. Um, the symptoms, uh, they include seizures, chronic headaches, dizziness, nausea, impaired vision, um, you know, memory, cognitive skills are, are you know, uh, decreasing. Uh, brain tumors are also the leading cancer causing deaths of children under the age of 20. 
that's the fact that gets me the most. So many young children um, are afflicted with brain tumors. Uh, so that's why I'm talking to you guys today, going to tell you a little bit of my story, mostly taking your questions, um, but to bring awareness about brain tumors and, and brain tumor issues.